One thing I hear a lot of people say in VR chat is, I wish I had full body tracking, but it's too expensive. For a lot of people, they might not have base stations, they might not have a PC capable enough to play VR chat, and they might only have a quest. The equipment necessary to achieve full body tracking can get very expensive. So what's the solution? Oh, just uh, get a job. You have a job? Why wouldn't I? I'm not some lazy, inconsiderate jerk who lays in bed all day. One alternative to getting full body tracking is buying IMU-based trackers. They may not be as accurate as things like the Tundra trackers or Vive trackers, but they're a hell of a lot cheaper, saving you hundreds of dollars that you can spend on food, computer peripherals, or dozens of Bucky Beaver bobbleheads. It's really cool, I recommend you buy one. The problem with the current IMU trackers on the market though is availability. Well, here it goes. Well, didn't I tell ya? Isn't it great? One of my friends ordered slime trackers in October of 2021, and as of recording this video, it has been almost two years and he still doesn't have them. And the Harotora X is completely sold out. There's just nothing to buy, like just take my money, man. But now we have a new competitor in the IMU space, made from the same creators of the PlayStation. Sit back and relax as we talk about Sony's new Mokopi trackers. I'm gonna keep it real with you guys, I was ecstatic when Sony reached out to me to discuss their new full body trackers. I've always had my eyes on these devices when they first launched in Japan. And now they have finally made their way over to the US and I'm super lucky to get the opportunity to review it for you guys. It's not often I get the chance to try out new full body trackers. I've only ever had my Vive 3.0s and tested Stonks trackers in a previous video. I'm a huge fan of full body tracking so I'm always happy to see new competitors enter the market because it gives us consumers more options to choose from. Especially from a company like Sony because they're not exactly small in terms of size. Here's what you get in the box. Open it up and you'll be presented with a quick start guide on how to get these things working. Lift this up and you'll get the Mokopi trackers. And under that are the provided straps, which are pretty neat because it uses magnets to attach the trackers. Let's take a look at the star of the show, the Mokopi trackers. They come inside of this magnetic case that also serves as the charging hub. Just make sure that the trackers are seated properly, plug in the USB-C cable, and they will all start charging. After charging for about an hour and a half, they will last you up to 10 hours. All of the trackers are small and light, with each of them only weighing 8 grams. Comparing them to my Vive trackers, it's really nice not to have my hip tracker bounce up and down. They all look really colorful and they're labeled to show you where to attach them. The gray circle in the middle is also your power button. It's not a lot of stuff. If you want, you could throw these things in a bag and bring it over to a friend's house because that's all you need. The overall quality of the trackers are great, at least from an outside perspective, with its premium feel and robust construction. This is not too surprising given Sony's long history of manufacturing products on a large scale. I'm right here for the PlayStation 2. <laughs> but the main question is, do they even track bro? The setup process was very simple because you already have everything you need to get started, as long as you have a phone. The trackers use your phone's Bluetooth to connect. You'll pair each of them one by one. They'll most likely go through a firmware update and afterwards you'll attach them to your body and do some calibration. And finally, you're all set up in the Mokopi app. From here, you can record videos, change your avatar and background, recalibrate, and all types of stuff. You can even add in your own avatar, but I wasn't able to do it. I'm just not really good with Unity. So first impressions looking at the tracking, it looks great. It's able to handle things like standing around, walking around, doing cartwheels, and more with ease. Cartwheels, it does pretty good cartwheels too. Oh shit! Oh! However, the one thing that I found that these trackers struggle with is any actions performed on the floor. The tracking quality can vary sometimes, but laying down, push-ups, and handstands are a couple of things that sometimes don't look perfect. But as long as you're standing up and not doing anything crazy, the tracking quality looks great. So along with recording little videos, you can use the motion capture data the Mokopi app gathers and send it to your PC for various use inside of different programs. Like if you wanted to do some quick and easy motion capture inside of Unreal Engine or Unity. But the main reason I feel most people would want these trackers is for use inside of VRChat using OSC. So yes, if you're playing VRChat using Quest Standalone, you can use these trackers. So how do these things perform for full body tracking? To put it shortly, there's a lot of room for improvement. The trackers do track my movements, but it does have a bit of drift and the movement can look choppy sometimes. So let me stop right there. 
Now, when I first originally made this video, I was actually quite a bit harsh on Mokopi. In fact, a lot of the things I said regarding the tracking were negative. But right as I was about to finish making this video, I got to try out a new beta version of the app. One that would turn the wrist trackers into thigh trackers, which was one of my main complaints in my original review. I mean, do you really need wrist trackers when you have your controllers? Do you really need the head tracker when you have your entire VR headset? No, you really don't. These three trackers are basically useless. You fuck. What this means is that VRChat is only picking up six points of tracking. Well, I completely retract those statements as this new beta update from Sony has completely changed my view on Mokopi. So because I was going to be moving the wrist trackers to my thighs, I had to get a little creative because the straps that you get with it are not going to fit on your thighs at all. So I drove to my local Walmart and bought some Velcro straps. I did a little bit of DIY, and now I have proper thigh straps. The setup for the beta version of the app is just as easy as the previous version. It's just that your avatar is going to be in a T-pose because well, you don't have hands anymore. It looks kind of funny. I connected the app to my IP address and started up VRChat to try it out. It was really just as easy as enabling OSC and calibrating my avatar. Here's some footage comparing the two different versions of the Macopi app. It's crazy how much moving the wrist trackers to your thighs improves the tracking quality. Previously, the movement used to look super choppy, but now it looks so much more smooth and accurate. Standing and walking around looks pretty natural, sitting in my chair looks good, and laying down doesn't look too bad either. Albeit, things that are done on the floor are still Makopi's biggest weak point. And finally, I did a cartwheel, the ultimate test to see if Makopi could handle such a complex maneuver. And it ended up looking pretty good. Again, with the beta version, it's a lot more smooth. One slight issue with the tracking is that there's a noticeable delay, so it can be a little weird when I see my hands being tracked basically perfectly, but my trackers are a second or so behind. Now keep in mind that this is the beta version of the app. It's not currently available for the public to use. I think they're going to be releasing it sometime of quarter four of this year, as they take the time to polish it just a little more. I think that if you were able to use a head tracker for chest tracking, the quality of the trackers could be even better. So I initially thought that these trackers were slightly overpriced for what you got, costing you $450 or dozens of Bucky Beaver bobblehead. But with this new update, I've changed my mind. The Makopi trackers may be some of the best IMU trackers currently available. Although they are more pricey than the other alternatives in the IMU space, you get lightweight and extremely portable trackers on this cool little box, along with the easiest setup process you'll ever go through for full body. I did want to note that if you're someone who already has a decent computer along with base stations, these trackers are probably not the best option for you. Cause at that point, getting Vive 3.0s or Tundra trackers would actually be cheaper. But for those of you who don't have any of those, consider checking out Makopi. I would love to hear what you guys think about the Makopi trackers, so please leave a comment down below about your opinions. I sincerely thank Sony for sponsoring this video and sending me these trackers to review. And special thanks to my Patreons for supporting me in the content I make. Last month, I was able to afford groceries because of them. Anyways guys, that'll be it for this video. Be sure to check out my Discord server because that's where you can find me a lot. We are almost 40,000 subscribers away from 100k, so make sure you guys subscribe. My socials are in the description as always. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.